Significant news has just come from the Red Planet. The Mars Global Surveyor satellite has recently conducted a new orbital study that provides the best proof to date that Mars once had liquid water, possibly even a geothermal core that is functioning. A worldwide team of academics fed data into a new computer model created to simulate Martian ice flow using the topographical mapping tools of the satellite, and it produced some initially really intriguing outcomes. So, what are the outcomes? Welcome to our channel, guys. In today's video, we'll discuss NASA's new discovery on Mars. Before that, do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We must go back to 2018, when the Mars Express Orbiter discovered that the southern ice cap receded and rose with the seasons. It was hypothesized at the time that this movement was caused by liquid water, similar to our own ice caps. But many scientists were dubious about the need for geothermal heat to liquefy water beneath a substantial sheet of ice. Furthermore, nobody was aware of Mars's geothermal activity. It is merely a rock that has been frozen solid. So, in the absence of other information, scientists proposed that the movement might potentially be explained by some dry material shifting, such as sand. At this point, the laser altimeter on the Mars Global Surveyor satellite, which is more sensitive than the radar on Mars Express, can map the shape of the upper surface in more detail. The surveyor identified waves or undulations in the ice surface in addition to confirming the previously discovered movement. Now that we know liquid water channels run underneath our own ice sheets on Earth, we have employed comparable equipment to measure how they move. Using the specific Martian circumstances and gravity, the researchers were able to create a computer-driven simulation model for Mars using this data to determine the precise motion of these ice caps. The model demonstrated that this movement could only result from subsurface liquid water motion. And it is at this point that the study shifts from being primarily about water to maybe making a significant discovery about the planet's core. The model demonstrated that for this glacial movement to exist under Martian gravity, and circumstances, liquid water is required. However, it also demonstrated that without the addition of a further factor, geothermal activity, liquid water simply could not exist on the planet due to its extremely low temperatures. Scientists have previously assumed that the planet's core was completely inactive. In any of our observations to this point, no geysers, springs, or active volcanoes have been discovered. This was the cause of all the uncertainty in 2018. The researchers therefore suggested that we should be open to the notion that there is still some movement occurring beneath the Martian crust, which was recorded by Mars Express, in light of the new data. Until a polar mission can drill down far enough to reach water, we most likely need to wait. However, the fact that the model was able to successfully use laser altimeter data from the Mars Global Surveyor is excellent news for any team looking for water on ice planets like Titan or Enceladus. We'll find life more easily as we get more adept at finding water. The Hubble Telescope of NASA SpaceX is stepping up to give its assistance to a veteran piece of equipment that is 32 years old and desperately in need of an orbital rescue to keep afloat. NASA recently stated that a study with SpaceX would be conducted to determine whether the aging telescope might be maintained by the private rocket business, something not done in more than 12 years. Hubble was meant to be maintained and enhanced using the same space shuttles that launched it in 1990. Evidently, it hasn't occurred since the program was terminated in 2011. However, the telescope's most recent service visit was in 2009. Since that time, the telescope has been progressively losing altitude and deteriorating. However, Hubble has long been the workhorse of NASA's astronomical observation operations. Even the James Webb Space Telescope's launch serves to emphasize the crucial significance. The incredibly detailed photos are still available from Hubble. The targets provided by Hubble's wide-field camera are the only reason the James Webb gives us the astonishing images that it does. Otherwise, the Webb would take an eternity to locate the appropriate area to focus on, and perhaps that elevated significance in the face of a deorbiting. The proposal from SpaceX to NASA a few months ago was specifically motivated by Hubble. 
They came up with the concept of conducting a study to determine whether a commercial crew might lift Hubble back up to its operational orbit and provide it with much-needed maintenance. In accord, NASA ratified the study's Space Act Agreement. The technical aspect of the proposal will be the main focus of the six-month study. Specifically, the SpaceX Polaris team is stepping in to see if a Dragon capsule might even be able to perform the work. A variety of industrial and commercial operations makes up the Polaris mission. A commercial crew will travel on the inaugurable mission of Polaris Dawn, scheduled to launch no later than March 2023, to the highest Earth orbit ever attained. Also, conduct a spacewalk, since servicing Hubble will require major modifications to the Dragon capsule and the shuttles, this is probably the main reason SpaceX is enlisting Polaris. It had a cargo bay and an armature that was used to secure the telescope while it was in use. Up there, it resembled having a floating garage. Dragon is a crew capsule that is functionally identical to the previous Apollo capsules. For Polaris Dawn, the Dragon must, however, already undergo some modifications to enable a spacewalk. So the best people to discuss are definitely the Polaris crew. The modifications that a Dragon could undergo and still function properly. In addition, there are some unfinished plans for the second Polaris mission. Or, if it is, we don't know anything about it. We are aware that the general purpose of Polaris missions is to advance technology. That is expressly mentioned on their website. A Hubble service mission would be a natural second mission for the program, according to Polaris lead Jared Isaacman. But given all the adjustments required, a study is unquestionably the best way to approach this subject. NASA is already stated that this study will not be closed. They urge any more businesses or international organizations to offer proposals. If they believed it would be advantageous, they should know that Northrop Grumman, a longtime NASA partner, was already developing a plan to maintain older satellites like Hubble using a robotic vehicle. And in a statement to the press after the study, SpaceX states that they are also open to such a notion. According to SpaceX manager Jessica Jensen, this study might have some value. The entire world has benefited from Hubble as a valuable instrument, and the study significantly increased the duration of its operation. It's challenging to think of a topic that would better highlight collaboration between private and public sector organizations, considering how crucial it is for future monitoring missions. NASA's $330 million DART mission came to an end on September 26th when its satellite purposefully collided with an asteroid. That was the mission's goal. Last November, the double asteroid redirection test was launched at a sizable asteroid Didymus. To orbit the rock and crash into Dimorphos was the idea. And even though you might think that spending $330 million on this endeavor is a tremendous waste, the DART mission's accomplishment marks the first time humanity has demonstrated that we are capable of protecting ourselves from incoming asteroids. There are numerous organizations on Earth keeping an eye on the skies for stray objects. What then do we do when that occurs? There are other possibilities, including the use of lasers to destroy it, or the use of a lucky crew of oil drillers, or a gravity tug appears to work, but none of them is as simple to test as simply hitting the rock with something heavy. That straightforward strategy carried out sufficiently enough from Earth may easily deflect an approaching planet killer. DART was developed by NASA and its partners to demonstrate that a straightforward kinetic impact would be sufficient. Actually, there are two vehicles that make up the satellite. A small cube satellite that separated from the main dark kinetic impactor 15 days before impact and added more telemetry as well as watched the effect itself. Due to the difficulty of the required maneuvers, DART was outfitted with a potent Draco camera to locate its targets. However, it also has a sophisticated navigation system that is typically used to guide missiles. Together, Draco and SMART were able to maneuver the craft to an orbit that is very simple for NASA to analyze the test's outcomes, within 17 meters of the desired Didymus and Dimorphos orbit. The only thing left to do is wait to see how much movement the dark contact will actually generate. So what do you think about this? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you do that, do not forget to give us a like, share, and do subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching.